to Wednesday's News Moto, brought to you by For Real. In this News on Two Wheels, you get to watch footage of a ride in Cambodia while I update you on the news of the week. Today's ride takes us on a relaxing journey to Prayer Dak, where you can see the beautiful green scenery. Next week, we'll have a guest ride from Out Your Shell, so look forward to that one coming up. At For Real, we donate all of the money we earn from YouTube to charities in Cambodia. Here's the total we've raised so far. We are so pleased that we can do this and it's made possible because you are out there watching our videos. Please don't forget to like and if you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. Hopefully we can keep growing this channel and do even more good in Cambodia. Okay, let's get into the news. It is Wednesday the 13th of September and today we bridge the gap in Phnom Penh, deal with some bad monkeys, banish a road demon and wash it all down with some clean water. The governor of Phnom Penh confirmed the construction of the concrete cable-stayed bridge from Koh Pik to Koh Naria is now 92% complete. It's scheduled to be fully complete by mid-November, just in time for the water festival. This is another new piece of infrastructure that the Phnom Penh Capital Administration has achieved for the next generation to use for the common benefit and to improve the living standard of the people. The bridge across the Basak River connects Kopik to the satellite city of Konaria and it's 824 metres long, 24.5 metres wide and cost $38 million. Ryan over at Itchy Feet on the Cheap has a video about Konaria, so go and watch that if you're interested in seeing that new development. The Apsara National Authority is seeking help from wildlife experts to deal with aggressive monkeys that are attacking tourists at the Angkor Archaeological Park. Authorities are calling on tourists to stop feeding the monkeys. The plan to take care of the monkeys followed after two tourists were attacked in two separate incidents while visiting the temples recently. A monkey bit an American tourist and he sustained injuries to the right side of his neck from the attack. It was while he was visiting the Bayon Temple. He was really lucky it didn't nick a vein, I think. Another incident of aggressive monkeys involved a 39-year-old Thai tourist. Apsara Authority provided emergency treatment on site by washing the wounds and advising the victims to obtain vaccinations as a precautionary measure against disease and infection. The Deputy Director General of Apsara Authority said that troublesome monkeys living in the Angkor area do pose a threat to tourists. He noted that these monkeys seem to have lost their natural way of life, moving away from the self-sustaining behaviour of wild monkeys. Close contact with humans has domesticated many of the monkeys, if you can call biting people domestication. Consequently, many monkeys no longer spend their time foraging for food in the forest. Instead, they wait for people to feed them, and sometimes the animals snatch food and things away from tourists, which also poses risks. An Apsara Authority spokesman said that the main reason for the animal's aggression was due to the repeated feeding by tourists. The problem of monkeys biting tourists in the Angkor area is not new. Similar incidents have happened in the past and Apsara Authority has cooperated with the Forestry Administration to capture the dangerous monkeys and transport them to Phnom Tamao Zoo in Takeo Province. In more tourism news, the Ministry of Tourism has introduced six points to improve the quality of tourism products for the Chumben Festival which will be held on October 13, 14 and 15. The six main points that the Ministry of Tourism introduced to the Department of Tourism are as follows. Number one, collaborate with traders and tour operators to improve the quality of tourism products, maintain a clean environment and maintain appropriate prices for products and services. All accommodation, food and other services must be clearly listed. In case of non-compliance with the posted schedule, the business owner shall be liable under the law. Number two, the Department of Environment, the Department of Health and other relevant departments will guide the owners of businesses and tourism services, especially restaurants, street vendors, citizens and tourists on food safety and hygiene by striving to eliminate litter and waste. Number three, owners of boats and other water transport means that carry tourists must not be overloaded and must be equipped with the necessary relief equipment. Number four, the Department of Cult and Religion will set up a model pagoda for international tourists to learn about the history and customs of the Chumben Festival. Number five, the Department of Information and the private sector will widely promote tourist attractions and destinations in their localities. And number six is to establish a working group to disseminate and promote the implementation of the contents of this circular in a comprehensive manner to tour operators. Sihanoukville police say they have increased roadblocks and checkpoints to search for weapons, explosives, drugs and other misdemeanours, including motorcyclists not wearing helmets. 
The National Road Task Force of the Road Traffic Police Office teamed up with the Anti-Drug Police Force and tightened the law on land traffic, alcohol control, drug testing and strengthened the wearing of helmets. In addition, the National Police Deputy Commissioner and Preasianuk Provincial Police Commissioner also requested people, students, guardians of relevant departments throughout Preasianuk Province to cooperate and respect the law. Now for a small community announcement. For people in Phnom Penh who have an emergency and need help, you can now call 1291. You can call from any system free of charge with the Phnom Penh Police Force waiting to serve you 24 hours a day. The police force does ask people to please not call and disturb the team with non-emergency calls. Now an only in Cambodia story. 33 monks prayed recently at the weekend as a ceremony was held to banish evil spirits from an intersection believed to be cursed. The section of National Road 5 in O Kandel Village province is believed by locals to be under the influence of a malevolent entity who causes numerous crashes and accidents. Nothing to do with drink driving. The local people summoned 33 monks from three different pagodas to bless the road and ask for good luck and avoid traffic accidents at the intersection in future. Separately, commune authorities also requested the people who use this road to respect traffic rules, drive understandingly, have mutual tolerance and slow down and increase vigilance for everyone's safety. Unfortunately, this part of the road hasn't been blessed yet. In yet another addition to the roll call of drunk drivers behaving in an irresponsible manner in Phnom Penh, a drunken driver spectacularly flipped his vehicle. Witnesses say that the man, who was reported to be in an advanced state of intoxication, swerved and hit the railing of the Stung Mianche flyover, causing it to be overturned and hit a traffic sign. After the incident, the local authorities arrived and contacted the Phnom Penh traffic experts to measure and lift the vehicle and store it temporarily, waiting for a legal settlement. Now we have some good news. Cambodia has achieved 80% of clean water supply and the country is set to reach full coverage by 2025. The achievement was shared by the Minister of Rural Development during a courtesy visit from the Japanese ambassador to Cambodia. The minister also informed the Japanese ambassador about the ministry's policy to promote the rural economy through the construction of infrastructure and improvement of the people's well-being by educating them about clean water and proper use of latrines aimed at eliminating open defecation. And in more good news, United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York announced the return of 33 Khmer antiquities to the kingdom. The collection includes statues from the 10th to the 12th centuries that are originally looted from religious and archaeological sites in Cambodia. That is wonderful news to end this week's broadcast. That brings us to the end of this week's news. You're now up to date with all the most important events in the kingdom. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, have a great week, and we'll see you very soon.